Hello and welcome to the debate right here at Press TV. I'm Marzia Hajime. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, no deal was reached in Geneva between Iran and the P5 plus one, though there are reports that the agreement was ready to be inked when Tel Aviv flexed its muscles. Now, one day after the intense negotiations, the U.S. Under Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, who heads the American delegation for the nuclear talks, has headed to Tel Aviv to meet with Israeli leaders. Are the Western countries involved in the nuclear talks sovereign nations? Or do they take their orders from Tel Aviv? And what does it all mean for the future of reaching a deal between the parties? Stay with us as we take a look at all aspects of the latest talks between Iran and the P5 plus one. Reports emerging following the Geneva talks suggest that France and the U.S. derailed the possibility of clinching a draft nuclear deal with Tehran under pressure from Iran's arch foe, Israel. Apparently, Tel Aviv had ordered its allies to reject a deal that had already been agreed upon by all parties involved in Iran's nuclear talks. A day after the meeting, Tel Aviv was quick to admit that it's done its utmost to make its allies reject a nuclear deal during the talks. Speaking at a cabinet meeting, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu admitted to lobbying against what he called a bad and dangerous deal in private conversations with the leaders of the permanent members of the UN Security Council as well as Germany. I asked all the leaders, what is the rush? I suggested they wait and weigh all the issues seriously. It's a historical process, an historical decision to make. I request that they wait, and it's good that that's the decision that was made in the end, but I'm not deluding myself. There's a great desire to reach an agreement, and I hope it will not be at any cost. And if an agreement is reached, it has to be a good agreement, not a bad one. On the third day of the talks, it became clear that the talks were influenced by Israel. As the French foreign minister, Laurent Fabius, said his country would not accept the draft deal and highlighted the need to take Israel's concerns into full account in any agreement with Iran. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, who also attended the meeting, flew to Geneva from Tel Aviv, where he tried to defuse Israeli concerns about the Geneva talks. But that's not where the Israeli lobbying all ends. Israel's economy minister, Naftali Bennett, says Tel Aviv will be using its influence in the U.S. Congress to prevent any agreement over Iran's nuclear energy program before a new round of talks start on November the 20th. Tel Aviv says it will push American lawmakers into averting any deal that would allow removing sanctions on Iran while giving it the right to enrich uranium. Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, has said that Iran's atomic rights, including uranium enrichment inside the country, under international regulations are red lines that cannot be crossed. Iran <laughs> در برابر تهدید هیچ قدرتی سر فرود نمی آورد و نیاورده Israel's been lobbying against Iran's nuclear energy program, while Tel Aviv is the sole possessor of nuclear weapons in the Middle East, with an estimated 400 nuclear warheads. In the early years, Israel heavily relied on French assistance to get its hands on nuclear weapons and held its nuclear activities secret for years. Tel Aviv still refuses to sign any regulatory international nuclear agreement, including the NPT. Iran, on the other hand, is a signatory to the NPT and has always called for a Middle East free of nuclear weapons. I'd like to welcome my guest to the program out of San Francisco, investigative journalist Mr. Lee Kaplan. And out of Tehran, Press TV's newsroom director, Mr. Hamd Reza Imandi. Thank you both for being with us. Well, I'd like to start this off in San Francisco with uh, Lee Kaplan. Now, there are reports that basically there was an agreement until Israel via France made sure that the agree agreement wouldn't be signed. Uh, your take on this, if it's true. Well, Marzia, your, your news report isn't completely accurate. The French decided they didn't want to cooperate with this, and your news report said it was due to the Israelis, but I don't think it's due to the Israelis. I think the French realize that, number one, if, uh, if uh, Iran's, Iran's uh, nuclear program 
is not uh, curtailed, that uh, they stand more threatened by it even than the United States. The French are also aware that there are two types of nuclear weapons. One of them is plutonium. And if uh, Iran gets a pass on this and they're still allowed to enrich and make nuclear weapons, uh, enrich the uranium to make nuclear weapons, that what can happen is if plutonium is used, uh, it will be out of the realm to safely uh, have a uh, mission to destroy it militarily because the plutonium will go into the atmosphere and poison the whole atmosphere. So the French, I think, are being very adult about this. When I look at what Secretary Kerry is doing, I see Neville Chamberlain again uh, flying back home and waving a piece of paper and saying, this is peace at our time. And then, okay. of course, we all know what happened uh, after that meeting in Munich. Uh, Mr. Mati, your take on uh, what Mr. Kaplan says and uh, basically brought plutonium in all this, basically saying it is Paris that actually, uh, for whatever reason, just does not want uh, this deal to go through. Let me quote uh, something from a uh, leading Arab magazine. The French defense minister recently wrapped up a successful visit to the region by concluding a $1.5 billion deal with Saudi Arabia to overall uh, Saudi Navy ships. Uh, this shows that the French uh, are having, recently are having uh, financial dealings with regional countries like Saudi Arabia, which everyone knows is very much against the deal with Tehran. At the same time, we know that France uh, provided Israel with uh, nuclear weapons material, and uh, France has very good military ties with Israel. So uh, France is helping Israel get nuclear weapons. France is uh, helping Saudi Arabia beef up its uh, military uh, sector. So this is the way France is dealing with these two entities. And these are the most vocal critics of a deal with Iran. So it is possible that the Israelis have told the French to go and uh, sabotage the talks. We know that nothing can go without the uh, US permission. So perhaps uh, the United States was also involved in this. But what we know, uh, for now, is uh, France was the one that tried its best uh, not to have a deal with Iran at this stage in Geneva. Okay, what about that, Mr. Kaplan? Because we do know that the uh, French foreign minister had said that there could be no deal that would end up not being good for Israel. So what exactly did he mean when he was talking about uh, making sure that Israel would be satisfied with any possible deal that would come out of Geneva? I think he was being very adult about the whole situation. You have, uh, unfortunately, Secretary Kerry and the Obama administration like to put blinders on and pretend that they're making negotiations that lead to a, a successful outcome. And I think the French took a look at this and they said, this is going to lead to nuclear war down the line. Uh, frankly, I think that the French do not do Israel's bidding in fact, uh, there have been many more occasions when they have refused to do Israel's bidding. And they certainly haven't in the past been friends of the United States and a lot of diplomatic stuff. I think the French, French really feel threatened by this. And when you allude to uh, the Saudi, them helping the Saudis too, well, you know, that's in the interests of France. They're going to do what's in their best security interest. And they see that as uh, uh, the best way to go. Uh, the Obama administration is talking about releasing uh, uh, billions of dollars in money to uh, the Iranian government, which have been held back by sanctions, which at the same time, the Iranian government is reeling from the sanctions, which should be kept in place until the nuclear uh, capabilities are dismantled. Uh, Mr. Imadi, what do you make about uh, the uh, American Undersecretary of State Wendy Sherman traveling to Tel Aviv one day after these uh, intense talks finish. Uh, it, it appears that she is basically going to Tel Aviv to give a report or to get orders from Israel. Your take on this, why would she go straight from Geneva to Tel Aviv, not even returning to Washington? Yeah, it's quite embarrassing for the Americans, for the American people and uh, for even the Europeans that their governments take orders from Tel Aviv. Uh, Israel is an entity which is in existence for six decades now and it is ordering countries like the US, countries like France, countries like Britain, countries like Germany and countries even like Russia and China what to do and how to think. So 
the Israeli Prime Minister said earlier today that uh, he has called those leaders and he has asked them to wait and not rush into a deal with Iran. What does that mean? So what the P5 plus one is doing now is just wasting the time of Iranians. It is just wasting the time of Europeans. It is just wasting the time of Americans. If it is going to listen to what Israel is telling them to do. Well, what about that, Mr. Kaplan? I, I mean, we have that Tel Aviv openly admitting that, but f from now until November the 20th, when the next round of talks are scheduled, that they're going to be in Washington, they're going to be lobbying, they're going to be talking to American officials about this. It, why is Israel uh, in this whole uh, uh, problem or this whole uh, equation because we're talking about the p5 plus one countries plus iran why is it so important that israel has to give the okay or the yes or no it appears to washington and others well it, it isn't necessarily so that israel has to give the okay but let's face it israel is the first target of any kind of nuclear proliferation uh, or war that the iranians might do and to suggest, as my uh, learned uh, debating colleague there has said, that uh, this country of seven million Jews, this tiny little country, dictates everything for every major power in the world, including China and Russia, is nonsense. And we're going back to the same source of problems here, is the Iranian regime always persisting in blaming Jews for well, every problem Jews, in the world? It's, it's not about uh, Jews, Mr. Kaplan. Your leader, it's, wait, it's, let me, fi let me well, finish, please. Well, it's not about Jews, let me finish. you're talking your nonsense. Leadership. Uh, it's not about Jews, it's you're not talking all about, about Jews. It's, it's all Israel. about, it's a it's fake all regime. About, no, it's got I'm nothing sorry. to do with it's, Jews, it's, it's got everything uh, well, to do with Jews. Well, you're interrupting, you're like interrupting you. me, but it's all about attacking the Jews. It is It's not about attacking the Jews, it's got nothing to do with attacking the Jews. That is. Okay, go ahead, Mr. It Kaplan. It has everything to do with attacking the Jews. No, no, it's not. Go ahead, okay, Mr. Kaplan. Well, you know, he, he keeps interrupting me. It has everything to do with attacking the Jews. And when the government of Iran finally figures out that blaming the Jews for everything is, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're wrong. If the government of Iran finally stops blaming the Jews for all their problems and starts to move towards a democratic regime and a, a non-dictatorship and to better the lives of the people of Iran Which instead has of heading weapons. them, Israel has heading them willy-nilly towards Israel a nuclear a war someday. Nuclear non-proliferation well, you, 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 you keep interrupting me because you're afraid of what, I, what I'm saying. With all the countries. That's, that's what okay, it is. Mr. That's Kaplan, Mr. Kaplan, let's look at where Wendy Sherman has, has gone today. Why has Wendy Sherman, in your perspective, gone straight from Geneva to Tel Aviv? It would appear that Tel Aviv is playing an integral part in all of this. Well, that's easy to answer. She's going to Tel Aviv to try and twist, uh, twist the arms of the Israelis. They're trying to make the Israelis do concessions. They're, do, they're always doing this at the U.S. State Department. What they're kind not of really concessions? Wait, can you Israel. stop right there? You said trying to twist the arm of the Israelis to do concessions. What type of concessions are you talking about? We're dealing with the nuclear talks between the P5 plus one and Iran. What role does Israel play in all of this? It, well, I've already explained that Israel is the number one target to attack. No, you have to remember, uh, explain you know, you the twisting memory, the arm the aspect. Uh, can you finish. expand let on me, that, please? Well, I'm trying to do that if you'd stop interrupting Please me. Please do. The fact, the fact is that the, the, fact, the fact is, is that the, uh, the American government is hoping to uh, curtail building of the settlements in the West Bank, which is uh, at odds at sometimes with the administration in Israel. And part of it is, you know, trying to give uh, Israel perhaps assurances that if they will cooperate with this this uh, concession to Iran that's going on in Geneva that it will work to their advantage and frankly they don't go to Israel to get orders from Israel they go to Israel to try and give Israel orders they aren't usually successful which is a good thing because what happens is you have politicians who are only interested in their own little little careers and agreements They'll make an agreement, and as uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said, a bad deal is a bad deal. Okay, there okay, is Mr. no Mahdi. reason why when the sanctions. Mr. Mahdi, now uh, Mr. Kaplan said uh, what uh, Mr. Netanyahu has said that a bad deal is a bad deal. Now we're talking about an entity that is believed to have 
many nuclear weapons, and yet they get the, if you want to say, opportunity or have the right to criticize Iran that continually says that it's a peaceful nuclear uh, project that they have and that they're not seeking nuclear weapons, and nor do they have it. So what does this mean as far as in the international community and international law, Mr. Imadi, where Israel gets basically to, to null and void a deal between Iran and the P5 plus one, and yet the Islamic Republic of Iran who does not have nuclear weapons, basically has to continue to, to deal with sanctions and all the other pressure from parts of the international community. Well, Israel does not want this crisis to go away. Israel want, wants this crisis to stay there uh, where it is. Because Israel is a parasite type creature that uh, lives on crises. It wants crises in the region. It wants crises in the world because uh, it, can, it can tell its people that we have an enemy, we have to uh, spend money on our military, we have to attack other countries because we have enemies. So it has to go, on, uh, go, go through this uh, warmongering and fearmongering projects in order to survive. Otherwise, Israel uh. cannot survive because Israel is a fake regime. Uh, getting back to the P5 plus one talks with Iran, the, the fact of the matter is that the previous Iranian negotiating team, uh, a lot of people would say that it was not a serious one. But this time around, Mr. Zarif, Foreign Minister, Foreign Minister Zarif and his team are a serious one. And no one in Iran doubts about their seriousness. And if Foreign Minister Zarif cannot strike a deal with the other party, that means for Iranians that it was not the fault of the Iranian uh, negotiating team. It was the other, the other um, uh, a party's fault. So it is becoming very much clear for the Iranians that the, the, the other party, the Western party in particular, is wasting time. It's not, it's not uh, negotiating in a, a good faith, in serious manner. That has to change. Uh, those um, dynamics will have to change. And the Western uh, party in the, in the talks will have to stop listening to Israel if it wants to put an end to this crisis once and forever. Uh, Mr. Kaplan, Iran President uh, Rouhani has said that the window of opportunity is limited and that the uh, Western uh, countries should definitely take serious this opportunity. Uh, do you think that uh, the Western countries are taking this situation serious? And, and what would be wrong with actually striking a deal? Would that not be good for the international community in your perspective? If the deal was to dismantle Iran's nuclear capabilities, absolutely. But Mayor Zee, you're, 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 you're doing something here which I call lying by omission. You leave out just enough information to convey a false impression. The fact is that your government has been threatening not only Israel, but they're building ICBMs and they're building satellites to deploy nuclear weapons. They're <laughs> on a footing and they are suggesting that they, in the long term, intend to attack Israel and the West. Now, you say it's, it's uh, the only opportunity for the West, you know, because of five, uh, Foreign Minister Zarif's uh, suggestions. The Iranian government has offered to dismantle nothing. They have not even offered to dismantle the heavy water production in Iraq in your, uh, uh, in your nuclear facilities. So this is a joke. <laughs> you're, you're offering, this is like the we have nuclear in the Middle rights East. Under you're offering law. nothing. You're offering nothing. You're offering nothing. And let, let me touch in while I have a chance, in fairness, let me talk about Israel and supposed nuclear weapons. Israel has never threatened anyone with nuclear weapons. They, they may have them. It's never been proven. They may have them for defensive purposes. But they have never threatened to nuke Iran. They have been uh, attacked by Iran in the press, by Ahmadinejad, uh, where they, he said he wants to wipe Israel off the map. And there's talks of uh, the 12th Imam and wiping out Israel and conquering the Jews. And we're hearing it again from this gentleman on the other end of the uh, debate about, about uh, you know, it's, it's those Jews. They're controlling all the Jews. countries uh, in the it's world. Not Jew. It's Please. not about Jews. It's okay, not Mr. About Mr. Jews. Mr. It's about Israelis are Jews. I'm sorry. Like I'm sorry. You, That's Kaplan. the truth. You are a Zionist, and the whole right. world knows what Zionists are up to right now. What Z they're doing. And Zionism the whole world. is a euphemism. They're up Zion to the whole world. Zionist Zionists. is a euphemism. Zionism is a euphemism for anti-Semites to refer to Jews. No, no, it's that not. That way they can try no, to say this. Okay, let's, let me just jump back no, in because uh, we're almost absolutely. out of time. Mr. Imadi, Mr. Imadi, now Mr. Kaplan has said, first of all, that Israel has not used uh, uh, nuclear weapons. <clears throat> they may have it, but 
of course, we do know that Israel has uh, used chemical weapons against Palestinians and others many times over know? without being condemned in the international community. Phosphorus as it's, bombs, Mr. Kaplan. Go read the news. As it Sounds stands like right now, Mr. Mr. Imadi, as it stands right it's now, with the situation on the ground, Mr. Kaplan, been speculation. please, don't interrupt me. Mr. Imadi, with the situation on the ground right now, as it stands, how likely is it that Tehran and the P5 plus one would actually be able to reach a deal or not? Well, Iran is very serious about the talks. Iran says we are ready to allay uh, all the concerns uh, of the United States and others about its nuclear program. Iran says that we are going to be more transparent. Uh, Iran says we are ready to do anything that it takes to show to the whole world that our uh, nuclear program is a peaceful one. But as long as Israel is influencing the talks, as, as long as Isra the Israeli prime minister calls uh, these leaders, Western leaders, and orders them not to strike a deal with Iran. I don't know where these talks are, are headed. You know, I don't know any point in, in negotiating with countries that, cannot, that do not have the authority to negotiate. Okay. And, uh, uh, that, that's the way it goes. They have to stop listening to Israel if they want. All right. Well, I thank you so much. Strong. I'm so sorry, both of you, but we're out of time. I appreciate uh, you being with us, Mr. Lee Kaplan, investigative journalist out of San Francisco, and uh, Mr. Amin Reza Imadi, Press TV's newsroom director right here in Tehran. And thank you, viewers, for being with us. Make sure you join us right here, same time, same, time, same place tomorrow. I'm Marzia Hashimi signing off for myself and all the team right here at the debate. Thanks and goodbye.